to a home that maybe you as professionals can, uh, can deliver. And I'd really like to point out that uh, we are in an environment where we have engineers, we have system designers, professional project managers, all of whose services are really required when it comes to a high-end home. Uh, today's definition of a high-end home, I would say, would be residences that can exceed 40,000 square feet, uh, 4,000 square meters for those of you in metric. Uh, they include cinema rooms, they include party areas, they may include uh, separate entertainment blocks. Some of them are built to the scale of even small hotels where they have separate guest rooms, five rooms, ten rooms, which are catered to literally by professional uh, servicing companies. So these are homes which to you and me who, who, who go back to Bombay apartments may seem alien, but they are being made in Alibag, they're being made in, in, in Lonavala, they're being made in New Delhi, they're being made as far away as Bellari in, 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 in South India, in Hyderabad. These are projects that exist and are happening today in the world. So one of the key things when you look at a very, very large home is that there are multiple systems that go into a high-end home. It's not about, like I said, where somebody can walk into a Chroma or walk into a, uh, a Vijay Sales and just buy the solution off the shelf. When we look at the kind of professionals or the kind of verticals that exist in a home, we're looking at uh, systems integration, which is the practice of joining the functions of several smaller subsystems, which include design, software, and hardware, to result in a single unified system that supports the requirements of the end user. Again, may sound complicated, but at the end of the day, you're expecting somebody, when they come home, they want to push a single button and have music start. And then they want, to, once the music starts in the living room, they want to add a balcony. They want to then add a master bedroom. Or they want to sw switch off the, the music that's going on in the party area. They want to invite a DJ home. When the DJ comes home, he, has to, he suddenly has XLR cables. He doesn't have Bluetooth. He doesn't have RCA pins. These are the things that happen uh, in a home nowadays. And what do they end up doing? They either have to call somebody or they're stuck with playing directly over Bluetooth. So the kind of professionals that we need and the verticals that we have, one of them is acoustic design. Noise control is a very critical thing when it comes to home. You might think, why? But when you're building a professional-grade cinema or sometimes a discotheque in the, in the middle of a house and you have multiple generations living in a house, noise control becomes a huge factor. All right? We do a lot of work where we're, we're, we're always balancing how loud you can play a system with how much you can, you can actually keep it quiet. Uh, as a company, we're uh, presenting, we're, we've built a demo room uh, of a 7.1.4 cinema room at the, in the main hall. Many people have walked past it because they've not been able to hear it. They don't know that it exists in that space. And that all has to do with noise control. We work with clients, some celebrities who have, for example, home studios. When in a home studio, we need the, we need the, we need the services of a professional acoustic designer. We even have professional music listening rooms. Many people uh, have high-end music systems where they want to place it in a room that is correctly uh, equivalent to what is done in a studio, for example. That cannot be done by an interior designer. It cannot be done on pure aesthetics alone. That, oh, my living room has to look fantastic so that my speakers sound good. It doesn't match. When you're building something so complicated, you need professionals to help you achieve that even in a, even in a home. When we look at home cinema, we do apply absolutely industry specifications for Dolby, DTS, IMAX, and even for Oro. By the way, anybody having any questions, please raise your hand. Like I said, it's, it's a topic which will be new to most of you. We do a lot of multi-room audio. And uh, at a recent uh, event, we presented how Dante can be used in a home and how uh, traditional home audio uh, solutions, which run with central amplifiers, long runs of speaker cable, at the end of the day become inefficient. You can run speaker cable for a certain distance, and then you're, you have to compensate for loss. You have, to, you have to worry about any interference that comes into the signal system. These are problems and solutions that have been developed or have been overcome, and there are workarounds, and there's uh, design solutions which can overcome it at a much before the problem occurs when you look at it from a pro perspective. When you look at the other thing that we look at also in, in homes is multi-room distributed video. So I did a project in a house once which had 16 televisions in a house of four people. Now you might wonder why a single family would require 16 televisions. But 
say the owner of the house, when he wakes up in the morning, as soon as he wakes up, he needs channel 453 running in the bedroom. He checks the news, moves to the bathroom. In the bathroom, the news should continue. That's TV number two. When he finishes that, comes back, goes to the gym, of course, all within walking distance inside his own house. The gym TV has to have the same channel running. Finishes the gym, comes back to the bathroom, that's three TVs already. Goes for his shower, washes up, goes for breakfast, there's another TV there. That's four TVs before he leaves for work. I'm not counting what's sitting in his office. When he comes home, his wife, family are sitting watching TV or they've gone to bed. He can't obviously switch on the bedroom TV. So he has a little den. Sits down by himself, catches the evening news. That's five televisions by one person in one day. Of course, you must realize that this was a, a few years ago before he had, we had mobile phones and laptops and news updates happening. But multi-room video with centralized switching is a requirement even today. I mentioned party areas earlier. Uh, we have as a company quoted for projects in cities like Hyderabad and in New Delhi with private party areas that are probably as big as this plus extensions. You cannot do that with the home audio system. We have to come to the pro side. The pro side has to be consulted. And we bring in professionals from, from this side of the field to help us achieve these results. When we come to video displays, video displays also have become to get very, very creative in homes. Typically in rooms like this, you would have an LED wall like this. This would probably be a DJ console, and there'd be a guy throwing a party for 600 people, and he would need a video wall behind him. Not unusual, and I would say uh, the pandemic situation where people were not able to go out forced people to realize that if they want to entertain and they wanted to entertain in their specific way with their private session with their private people, this is the best way to do it. Build it inside your own house. The last part of this, which I think we all realize holds all this together is IT, right? Without IT, without that single small Cat6 cable, where would we all be? It can replace anything that we connect with today. So IT is used in the home for intercom, telephony, uh, of course the ubiquitous Wi-Fi, uh, wired LAN systems, security, surveillance, and the situation that we all know very well, which is video conferencing and working from home. If you and I were required to do it, so do multi-millionaire uh, CEOs and managing directors who don't want to go out back to their offices or large hold conferences maybe across continents sitting and working from home. When we look at a very high-end residential system, one of the things that we do is we break it down uh, into different service verticals. Okay, and the reason the reason I would do that is because we literally need a professional for every single vertical that goes into a high-end home. I mentioned IT. The IT person would be doing the work maybe across 40,000 square feet, 50,000 square feet, which is equivalent to a very high-end even an office, and may have even stricter requirements than even an office would have. So, one of the key uh, things that we call this home. I developed the term which I call the living environment, which is the physical structure itself, the aesthetics that go along with it, and residential man management uh, systems. And residential management systems we may know as BMS, for example, that manage water, that manage electricity, that manage uh, temperature, HVAC. These all become part at a scale which requires a separate professional to manage them. The objective, of course, being interactivity. Like I said, when you go to a hotel, or you walk into, get into a modern car, or you go, even when you pick up your phone, one of the first things you want to do is start to interact with that device, or you want to interact with the environment. You want to be able to switch on things, switch off things, increase the temperature. Today, in, in, in today's cars, I never thought I'd see the day, but they want you to be able to change the lighting system so that you can be in a different mood. Uh, these are things that are being given to us by manufacturers and being demanded by, by our customers also. So the aim is to always have a consulted design, to create a service-based owner experience, which runs around residential management systems that are always at the service of the homeowner, which simply means that it's not like in a hotel where if you have a problem, you end up calling room service, or you call the engineering department, or you call XYZ. At the end of the day, 
at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, whenever offices shut, that person sitting at home having a problem at 10 o'clock at night needs to have access to all, to all his residential management systems. He needs to know if there is a water problem. He needs to know if there's a power situation. He needs to know across 40,000 square feet if there's an intruder, if there's an alarm that's gone off in the perimeter somewhere. He has to be able to check it himself. So these are things which, however complex we make them, we have to make sure that they're still at the service and available for easy use to the homeowner. The last point which I put down uh, is understanding about the ownership experience. That these are not products which, like I mentioned before, in the case of a hotel where you can just call the reception or call the lobby and say, hey, my air conditioning is not working or this is not working or can you turn down the, can you send somebody to fix the leaky toilet tap or why is there no water, what is the, you know, why am I not getting hot water in, the, in, in my bedroom? So these are things which we have to understand that when people go out to buy, they're not just buying the system in that moment, picking it up and taking it home, right? And again, this is the difference between where you would walk into a, a retail store, buy a TV. Once you bought the TV, Vijay Sales' job is over. It's done. Then Samsung takes over, but the minute you try and get in touch with Samsung, Samsung will say, call my service center, service center will say, talk to the elect engineer, engineer says, I'm coming on Tuesday morning, 9 a.m., doesn't show up till January when he promised tomorrow. So these are things which form part of the ownership experience. When, and when we are looking at high-end residential systems, we have to move past the point of just being able to sell an item or sell a solution to a customer. It's about getting them to live with it, getting them to have a long-term relationship with the consultant and the product itself. So just to take you through some of the verticals or some of the services that go into a high-end home today. It's, we can start at perimeter security. That means, again, large homes, many times they're isolated. They need perimeter security that goes all around the outside of the house. They need surveillance cameras. They need access control. Access control meaning, you know, we've seen homes which we, when we imagine a home, maybe we think, oh, I have one front door, and maybe I have a back door, right? But in very large homes, there may be up to 10 different entrances to a home. In those 10 entrances, you have multiple different types of staff. You may have staff that look after the garden, not allowed inside the house. You'll have people who are dedicated to certain areas of the house which are not meant to go anywhere else. You may have an IT manager who comes in during the day, does some checking. You need to know where he's going around the house. So access control is very, very important. Then coming to the entertainment, we have entertainment for separately for music, entertainment separately for video. We have a temperature control and HVAC as a separate vertical. There's shades, curtain control. There's uh, internet access and cyber security. Again, a very important thing when you're building uh, work from home, high-end offices, people that need to connect on a real-time basis, not just of Zoom from a laptop, but actually have the reliability that comes from working in a, in a, in a fixed office location. LAN, emergency sensors, again, in a home where there isn't an engineer sitting at a console checking things all the time, we need systems that can respond very quickly to situations that are happening in the house. Water management, intercom and telephony, then the whole job of bringing the, all the systems together under one control panel. You would have heard of Crestron, you would have heard of AMX, you would have heard of maybe Control 4, but their job is to say, hey, there's a Panasonic TV, there's a Samsung Blu-ray player, there's a uh, XYZ camera, there's another door control system. How does one person sitting in his master bedroom or looking at a single tablet, how does he then sit and interact with each one of these without having to open, you know, touch four different kinds of panels. We ourselves have trouble, and there are companies called aggregators making money by saying, okay, I'll take these five pieces of information, filter it for you, and give it to you. So interaction and interoperability is a job, is a very key job of the uh, high-end consultant. And last but not least, uh, I've also mentioned staff management, because as you know, the higher up you go, imagine, again, going to a large hotel, You'll have ground staff, you have people at the door, you have people at the reception, you have different people who make your rooms, you have people who cook your food, you have people who serve your food. In the same way, a high-end residence has these, these many levels of staff. So managing the staff, their arrival, their departure, giving them tags or access control, biometric, all forms part of the high-end home, home solution. So 
I, towards the end of the presentation, I said, let's talk about a subject that maybe all of us already know. This is a bare shell, right? You would have seen it for a studio on a larger scale. You would have seen it for an auditorium for what else? Uh, could be an office as well. So this was, this was an absolutely bare shell room that was inside an apartment, OK? And I use this as an example because here we had to apply principles of acoustics, electrical engineering, and at the end of the day, cinema design as well. So this room was in an apartment where we were not, the noise control requirements were very, very high. So transmission upstairs, downstairs, left and right was not a problem because that's his own family. But to the right, sorry, if you're looking to the right is the master bedroom. And just across the corridor was the gentleman's wife's private office. So he couldn't make too much noise because then she would get disturbed. So noise isolation was a very critical thing. And as you can see, it's not a very large room. So we had to find an engineer who could help us design an isolation system that could fit within eight inches across all surfaces, including the window. And I'm not going to get into the design aspect of it, but it follows the same stage. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this. Bare POP, screwing in walls, lifting speakers, installing them, making sure the cable connections have all, uh, all happened correctly, testing before you start plastering. And at the end, this is what you want to see. This is what the homeowner wants to see. This is what this building's client wants to see. He's been through six months, one year of walking through dust and seeing, you know, wondering when it's going to finish. But this is what they expect to see. Whether it's a home, whether it's an office, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a hotel, the finished product is what the owner wants to see. And this is what they have to live with. So talking again about the uh, homeowner's experience, it's all about reliability. That's a... Uh, uh, I, can, I won't mention a brand name, but ultra short throw projector. The processor is sitting in a well-ventilated cabinet on the right-hand side. Each of those cabinets have been designed so that they can be opened upwards like this, and you can reach down, and as service people, we can arrange any cabling that, was, uh, that needs to be done. There's Bluetooth connectivity, Wi-Fi, AirPlay, Chromecast, Netflix, Doordarshan, everything. So these are things that you really have to think ahead of. And it, it's, it's not about just walking into a store, buying a TV, then the next Sunday going out and buying a small sound bar. High-end home solutions have moved well, well, well beyond that. So at the very high end, and again, the reason I'm presenting it in this forum is that today's really successful residential project or integration system or, a, or a, uh, a consultant has to be exposed to working across many different sectors. You'll have to pull experiences and consultants and knowledge from various different uh, um, uh, commercial fields, being hospitality, commercial for audio, video, acoustics, project management. I've worked on projects where the project manager, it, I mean, there are project management companies I'm sure that you guys have all worked with who have come in from a hotel background just to manage a residential project, just from the sheer scale of it. Because interior designers may be from Bombay, architects from Singapore, client lives halfway, half the time here, half the time in Dubai, half the time somewhere else. Project management, decision making becomes a very, very critical aspect of getting this project to be successful. So at the end of the day, like I said, so project management, IT, all focus around achieving the best possible end result for the for the client. And that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions. OK. Then thank you very much. And we're over at booth F19. Do come by, please. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for that lovely session. I now call upon uh, Ms. Smita Rai, Deputy Project Director of Palm Expo, to give Mr. Viravanta a token of appreciation, please. Everyone applause. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay back for the panel discussion on big studios make big soundtracks. Panelists on this session include Farhad, Shantanu, 
विश्वदीप चैटर्जी एंड के जे सिंह थैंक यू